Hi, pre-calculus students. Welcome to section 4.4. There will be two videos uh, because uh, there's lots of examples and I can't fit it all on one board, right? I can, but then I'd have to write small and you wouldn't be able to read it. So here's video A and there, then we will do video B that will start with example four. Okay, there's a lot going on in 4.4. Um, and so I do a lot of examples so that you don't come across something that you haven't seen. So we are going to, um, how do we find trig values or angles? And I just put given a variety of information. Like, so you definitely want to take notes thoroughly on these two videos. So every time you come across a new question with new information, you know what to do. Okay, um, my hint is I always draw a picture for everyone. So let's look at number one. How do you find a reference angle? So what a reference angle is, is it's always positive. And when you rotate any angle, either in a positive or negative direction, it is wherever your terminating side is, it is the angle that is in between your terminating side and the closest X axis. And again, it's always positive. So. How do I find a reference angle? We call that theta prime. Draw the given angle. Find the angle between your terminal side and then closest to the X axis. And it's always positive. So A, let's go ahead and draw pi over six. You know pi over six is 30 degrees, right? So we will rotate, it's positive upward, pi over six. There we go. The reference angle is the angle in between your terminating side, your terminating side and the closest X axis. So in this case, you were given pi over six and the reference angle is also pi over six. Two pi, two pi over three. There we go you know that pi over three is 60 degrees and I have two of them. So I'm gonna rotate to 60 degrees. So here's one pi over three, two pi over three. My reference angle is right here, right? Notice that here is pi, which is called three pi over three also right? Isn't that still pi? So I rotated two pi's and I am one pi over three short of pi. And so my reference angle, this is the angle between my terminating side and the x-axis. So the reference angle for two pi over three is pi over three. 215 degrees. Let's go ahead and rotate that. Let's see, I'll rotate, here's 90, 180, and I have to go 35 more. Right? I stopped at 180 and I said, hey, how much farther do I have to go? It was 35 degrees. So here is my 215 degree rotation, right? I am 35 degrees from the closest X axis. My reference angle is 35 degrees. Three hundred and twenty degrees. I will rotate all the way around and I am 40 degrees short of the closest X axis, right? So my reference angle for 320 is 40 degrees. Please notice, I know we're out of examples, but I just want to show you one more. What if I rotated a negative 320 degrees? I would be 40 degrees short 
of the closest x axis and my reference angle would still be 40 degrees. Right, so it doesn't matter if your original angle is positive or negative, your reference angle is always positive. Next, let's say they, here's how the book says it. Given the point one negative three, that is on the terminating side of an angle that's been rotated theta, find the six trig values. So how do I find six trig values given a point rotated two, right? So usually the point one negative three, right? We go right and down, but we could also have a point on the end of a radius and rotate to that point. And that's what's going on here. So what we're gonna do is draw a point, connect it to the origin, draw our reference angle, if possible. We're gonna fill in two sides of the triangle, if possible, and find a third side. So we're gonna start with this example here. So let's go ahead and draw a picture. Here is the point one, negative three. So I could have had a point on a radius and rotated to it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, there's my terminating side of my rotation. Now my reference angle is right here. How far am I from the, an X axis? So I'm going to make my triangle if possible. We'll talk about what if you can't make your triangle. Notice that without a doubt, I have two sides here, right? This is a length of one here, right? And this right here was negative three, right? So whenever you've been given a point, you always have two sides of the triangle. Okay. Our next step is if we have two sides of the triangle, find the third side. So I have to find the hypotenuse here. So I am going to square one leg, square the other, add them up and take the square root. This side is a square root of 10, that hypotenuse. And in fact, it's always positive because I squared a positive, squared a negative, it became positive and took the square root. So this hypotenuse is always positive. Notice now, here is my reference angle. I can write the trig functions because one is uh, an adjacent side, right? Negative three is an opposite side and the square root of 10 is the hypotenuse. So let's write those trig functions. So cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse right? And that rationalizes to the square root of 10 over 10 if I multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 10. Sine of theta is equal to negative 3 over the square root of 10. That rationalizes to a negative 3 square root of 10 over 10. Tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, a negative three over one, or just a negative three. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. However, I don't want to flip my final rationalized answer because I'll have to rationalize it again. I take my original answer for cosine and take the reciprocal. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine negative square root of 10 over three. And cotangent, making sure you can still see that, is a negative one third. Okay, now another example, what if you, they ask the same question, but you cannot draw a triangle. Here's what I mean. Here's a new example. Let's say they give you the point uh, zero and two, and they want the trig function. So when you go ahead and draw it, you are located right here. Well, notice when I ask you to draw a line to the origin, right? Notice you can't make a triangle, right? Because <laughs> it wasn't 
it wasn't on a slant where you can make a triangle. So how do I get the six trig functions at zero two? Well, because I know where I am. I am at 90 degrees or pi over two. And I know what the trig functions are at 90 degrees and pi over two. I know that cosine is the X value, right? And so that is um, zero. I know that sine is um, a, a sine of 90 degrees. I can say this is one, right? You may be like, well, I have a two there, Miss Culver. But let's take a look. Here's your X, here's your Y, and your radius is two, which is the hypotenuse. And sine is opposite over adjacent. Two divided by two is one. Tangent at 90 degrees or pi over two, I know is undefined because it's, uh, it's sine over cosine and that's undefined. I'm going to find the reciprocal functions. Secant of theta, right? The reciprocal of zero. So cosine is really a zero over one then. And the reciprocal of that is one over zero. So secant is undefined, cosecant. Sine was really one over one and the reciprocal of that is also one and cotangent. Undefined means you're dividing by zero. So cotangent must be zero or let's take a look again. Tangent is sine over cosine. That's why it was undefined. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Zero over two is zero. Let's go to this last example until our new video where we'll have four. How do I find two solutions for theta where sine of theta is a negative square root of three over two? We want degrees and radians on the unit circle, okay? Here's what we're gonna do. The value of sine, the square root of three over two, comes from the first quadrant. All the values are in the first quadrant or on the quadrantal lines. Then, because my value is negative, I'll decide what quadrants I'm actually in, and then I'll write those angles. So it really helps to draw a picture. So again, notice that I do know that sine is a square root of three over two, ignoring the negative for a moment. Sine is a square root of three over two, right? Here's my hand. I know sine is the bottom fingers. So that would mean if I put in my pi over three finger, that would make sine the square root of three over two. So at pi over three in the first quadrant, sine is the square root of three over two. Okay. But what quadrants must I be in? Because sine is negative. Notice that sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrant. So I must be pi over three away from the X axis in the third and the fourth quadrant. Okay, so what do I do now? I just say what those angles are. Here we go. Theta would be, I'm going to rotate. Here's pi, which is three pi over three. And I'm one pi over three past. That is four pi over three. If you pull out your unit circle now and go to four pi over three, you'll see that sine is a negative square root of three over two. And then this angle here is one pi over three short of two pi. And I could write two pi as six pi over three. And I'm one pi over three short of six pi over three. I'm at five pi over three. If you go to your unit circle and you look at five pi over three, you'll see that sine is a negative square root of three over two. By the way, you need to do all these without your unit circle in front of you. It does have to be memorized. Let's turn these angles into um, degrees because we said, right, pi over three is 60 degrees. I got, I have four of them. That's 240. And then 60 times five is 300. There we go. All right, on to video number two.